All right, so now we're going to go through a few sample problems. We are going to calculate the potential due to a line charge. And just like when we were calculating, uh, just like when we were calculating um, electric fields, we are going to find a small part, a small piece of charge V Q. And here we're going to say that the total charge is Q and that our line charge has length L. So then a small piece of charge VQ is just Q over L VY. And I did try looking at, so if you were to set this up at an arbitrary point, it gets really ugly, it is possible. Um, let me set the integral up for an arbitrary point, and then we're going to do it for this simple case. Oh. So um, then our small fraction of the potential is k dq over um, r. So k is just a constant. And dq gives us q over l. And our distance from that little segment of charge is 1 over r. So we'll put the dy here. And here we are going to say, in general, you would have y minus y naught. Let me erase some stuff so I have room to write. quantity squared plus x naught squared. And that's if you are out here at x naught, y naught. This actually is an integral that you can look up in an integral table. So I will leave it as an exercise for the student to figure out that general case. An exercise for the student means lots of extra ugly algebra um, without a lot of additional physics gain sometimes. Main points there, but you don't need it. You can also learn how to use some of these tools for doing symbolic math so you don't have to do it by hand, but it is useful to do it by hand the ugly way at least a few times. All right, so now we're going to simplify this. And our simplification is to do exactly the problem that's drawn here, only I am going to call this, well, yeah, I can just drop the knot. So it's just x squared plus y squared in the denominator. This is also an integral that you can look up in an integral table. And we're going to integrate. In this case, the integration is from negative y over 2, or l over 2, positive l over 2. Um, integral tables are lovely. Um, how you can do this if you wanted to do it, um, you, and this is tricky. This is a tricky one because you would have to use, do u substitution, and your u is going to be a sine or a cosine so that when you take the square root, you um, end up with only one Term. It's a little ugly. We are going to use an integral table, and what you get is kq over l, and then the integral is 1 half y square root of y squared plus x squared plus uh, 1 half times the natural log of y plus y squared plus x squared square root. And then you have to plug in the integration limits of negative l over 2 and l over 2. Now, when we look at this term right here, oh, that leaves an arrow for me. didn't mean to leave the arrow. Okay, when we look at that term, um, that is odd, meaning that it is negative for positive 
for negative y and it is positive for positive y. And we have an, a symmetric integration limit. So I can tell you without actually even plugging in the numbers that this part goes to zero. That is fantastic. I like zeros. Um, this one does not, but if you remember, natural log of A minus natural log of B is natural log of A over B. So, some ugly algebra, which is left as an exercise for the student, um, lets you get this to K Q over L, the KQ over 2L times the natural log of 1 plus the square root of 1 plus 4X squared over L over negative 1 plus 1 plus 4X squared over L. Now, your book wrote it a little differently. That's cool. Doesn't matter. Uh, the reason why I like to um, write it like this is that you have um, very clearly, when you look at this, this has the correct unit, and you're multiplying by something that um, is unitless. And moreover, you can see how the scales of the problem come into play. So the, um, the field changes depending on x and l. Um, so it depends on how x changes. Um, it like you can see the system is sensitive to that that particular scale. So it lets you look at this and figure out the behavior of the system. All right, our next charge, our next example is a ring. Um, so for our ring, we can do this one delightfully easy. Um, our d Q is 2 pi r. Um, the figure, oh, how did we get there? The figure calls this lambda. I personally like writing it out step by step because it makes it easier for me to follow what's going on. All right, so our, or sorry, this should, this should be, this should say dq equals, let me just start this over again. This is all messy. dq equals Q over 2 pi r d theta. So d phi is k d q over r Now, we are fortunate there is no theta dependent. So when you do this integral over theta, you get a 2 pi, um, which cancels out the 2 pi that is there. Or you could leave it as a function of lambda. I leave it up to your discretion. Kq over r. I dropped an R here. My R, I should have R d theta. So we get KQ over R squared plus Z squared. And you can even write this, should you like to, KQ over R times 1 over 1 plus Z squared over R squared square root. The nice part about it, writing this way is it lets you see the behavior. So is z. Um, so you could also write it equally well as kq over r 
much squared. Yeah, I'll just stop messing around now. So, then we move on. You can look at a disk. You could start with the ring from before, but then you have to figure out how to write a small amount of charge in terms of a small amount, in, uh, in terms of a strip of ring. I personally find it a little more straightforward to start from scratch. DQ is Q over pi capital R squared. Um, so the total um, size of the disk and then a small amount of area, which is R, D, R, D, theta. And so then we have D phi is K, Q over pi R squared. Do, 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 do. R, D, R, D, theta, R squared plus Z squared square root. And the first integral goes from 0 to capital R. The second integral goes from 0 to 2 pi. There is no theta dependence, so the 2 pi, um, we can just, the 2 pi is going to cancel out the pi. And we end up with a k q over r squared two r d theta over r squared plus z squared square root. We are going to do u substitution, and we are going to say u is r squared plus z squared. So du is 2r d r, and I see that I made a mistake right here. This should be r, and let me put it in blue. So this integral, I have k Q over R squared, and then the integral of U to the negative one half DU, which gives me K Q over R squared, and then I have a square root of U, except that square root of U is R squared plus Z squared square root. And I get a factor of 2 from doing the integral. And then I'm going to put in my limit of 0 to r. And I get 2. And then here I'm going to put the pi back in. 2k q over pi r squared r squared plus z squared square root plus z squared and the reason I put that pi back in is that this is now the surface charge sigma which is how you'll find the answer written in a lot of resources um, books and online and such.